I apologize, we are two minutes late, uh, two minutes late getting started. And uh, I want to thank everybody for coming down. My name is Stephen Berry. I'm the County Commissioner for District 5 here in Sandy County. Um, well, man, there's a lot, number of county staff in the, uh, in the building, but just a few folks that may be of interest to a few of you here, uh, right here in front. So Wes Moreno is a county administrator, public works director is in a uh, teal, um, aquamarine, whatever, <laughs> black blue shirt, whatever. Uh, Jamie Higdon, beside him is George Blackman, she's a county engineer. And my aide at the end, that if you call the office, you would probably speak with her, her name is Dawn Trosh, uh, and she's on the end. Um, and then there's a number of other county staff here. I want to thank them for, uh, thank them for being here this afternoon. Um, there's a number of y'all here this evening, so I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to ask whatever question has, uh, has kind of brought you down here this evening. Um, the weather broke for us, so that's good. And, uh, uh, well, before I want to thank William Reynolds for being here from North East India. And uh, Trevor from, okay, uh, new change sheets. Trevor is in the audience in the back uh, with some spectacles on. He's from Representative Salzman's office. If you have any, uh, any state questions, He's, uh, he told me he's got, he's got all the answers. He's ready to go. So if you have any questions that may relate to Michelle's service, please uh, feel free to talk to Trevor some. And in the front, my colleague from District 5, the Miskimi County, I'm sorry, Emerald Coast Utilities Authority, District 5 representative Kevin Stevens is here uh, with ECUA. If, any, if ECUA has been the concern that's brought anyone down this evening, then uh, uh, we'll, uh, based on previous experience, Kevin's willing to uh, try to engage those questions. Um, and we'd be happy to do that at the beginning if you do have any CUA concerns so that you didn't have to stay here uh, for, the, for the duration. And just so you know, as long as, uh, as, long as folks are here and have questions, I'll be happy to uh, do the best I can to answer. We've got micro two microphones more. Two more? Sorry, one, okay. So we have a microphone that will just kind of move around the room. Like I said, I want everybody to have an opportunity to, uh, to ask a question. We do have some answers up here, especially as it relates to some projects and those kind of things, but uh, you know, I feel like these are an opportunity for you to talk, not for me to talk at you. So we'll just open the floor and uh, just kind of start with whoever gets their hand up first. Yes, sir. Okay, do I need to stand up? My name's Benjamin Davis. I live in the north end on 1140 South Highway 99, right across from Steve's farm. And uh, November the 1st of 22, I had a major heart attack. I knew something bad was going on. Usually, we have an ambulance two and a half miles at the fire station. Yes. Told my wife to call 911. She said, I'll drive you. I said, no, get an ambulance here. I said, I'm gonna need some help. Anyway, she called and it rung, rung, rung. Finally, a woman answered. She said, what, what's going on? So she started telling her, she go, are, are y'all fighting? She said, no, my husband's having a heart attack. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the sheriff's department. Let me transfer you to emergency or whatever. Woman, she told a woman, woman said, ambulance been dispatched. 10 minutes later, there's no ambulance there. I told her, I said, Daddy, I need some help. I said, call them back. She called them back. Oh, they're coming past 10 mile road now. She said, he'll be dead time they get here. Fortunately, our fire department showed up. Finally. <laughs> Kevin Miniger come in. Yes, sir. He started working with me, he asked me, he said, Ben, you're not doing good, are you? I said, no, Kevin, I sure ain't. He said, how do you feel about a helicopter ride? I said, you get in here as fast as you can. Long story short, I got to West Florida, had a stent put in, cleared the blockage, uh, or they cleared the blockage, put a stent in. I've done wonderful. I called your office about a week later, talked to somebody, just what I said tonight. Woman said, we gonna discuss this and we will get back with you. Well, it's been 15 months later, which I didn't follow up on it, but I sure ain't got no call back. But th this ain't the first time this has happened up there. Just the other night it happened again. Young man here, his daddy laid there for I don't know how long. Finally got permission from Atmore, I mean from the county to bring an ambulance from Atmore over there to transport him. 
This, this is getting unacceptable. It ain't just happening once in a while. It's happening a lot. We, we need something done that we have a staffed ambulance up there. I mean, I realize we, we way away from Pensacola, but still, it's not a good situation when you don't know if you're going to live or die and, and there's nobody there to help you. Yes, sir. Well, first, I'm sorry for what you I'm sorry for what you went through. Um, so it goes back a number of years. Um, you know, one of the things that you know was important when we expanded, you know, when we expanded EMS, was having a unit that would be stationed at Walnut Hill every day. And uh, you know, I thought that it was staying, you know, uh, because they were starting. You know, I'm told that they started every, you know, they start every day up there. Well. It, you know, it turns out that they weren't staying up there when, you know, when there was the need, they were getting called to town. Um, I do not remember uh, necessarily your, your specific personal situation, but it is something that really came to light more prevalently maybe last summer as being something that was happening kind of regularly. Uh, there were a number of, uh, number of instances. I've had a number of conversations with the administrator as well as uh, I know he's had a number of those same conversations with the public safety director about the unit staying there, about it not being pulled to town to run calls. Um, I know after the first couple of conversations, it was still happening. So there were more conversations, and I really kind of hit a pretty good level of comfort a few months back that it had, the situation had been solved, that they weren't getting pulled to town to run calls. If they're running their own call up there, I understand that. I mean, if they're running your call for a resident, you know, in that community, and they're gone, then that's understandable. There's there's some rationale to that. But you know, being pulled to town to run calls and then getting one call, so that it's the first call you've had that day, and there's no one there to respond, that's the part that's unacceptable. Um, like I said, for the last few months, I mean, I have been spot checking a couple times a week and been told that the, every time folks drop by, the unit's there. It's there, it's being staffed, it's being, you know, it's staying there. Uh, the young man you referred to right in front of you, he, he did tell me briefly a little bit of what's going on. And I was very disappointed to hear something happen recently. Um, I hope that we can, you know, whether it's during the meeting or maybe after, after he speaks, we can get some dates of those service because we have one of the things that the board did right after uh, I was elected was we have GPS in all the vehicles. So we can pull GPS reports for any day to see where the units went, how long they were in certain places, what speeds they drove, et cetera, et cetera. And if we get some dates, we can see what happened and why there was no one to respond on that day uh, to see if they were running a call in the community or were they in fact pulled to town to run calls again like they were before. Um, and then I, Mr. Davis, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened to you. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that I, I knew it was a problem, it became a problem, and I really thought after a handful of conversations that it was addressed. Uh, you know, the board does set policies. The administrator's tasked with carrying out the policies that the board sets. Uh, Wes, do you want to chat for just a minute about the conversations that you've had with public safety about it and about the importance, and it's, it's going to happen, and I don't know what, we'll have to look on that specific date and see what happened, but, it's going to get addressed. The unit is going to stay up there unless they're running those calls. Yeah, the commissioner's exactly right. We've had numerous conversations about this particular issue. We thought, as he said, that it was addressed. I talked to Eric Gilmore and, and said at length, I actually, when that ambulance moves, I get a text message on my phone. And I can log right in and see where it goes and when it comes back. I've been doing that pretty regularly, but if we have something that's, if we have a date that you can give me, pull the route up and see where all, everywhere the ambulance was going on any particular day. How long was, how long was it going, where it went to, was it running a call, I can see it all. So if you can give me some dates, I'm happy to run the reports. But again, sorry for, your, sorry for your specific situation, Mr. Davis, and, and it's, it's important. Again, I thought it was addressed, if not, uh, you know, I thought I was pretty clear in my communications, but perhaps I, I so perhaps I need to be more clear. So next. Yes, ma'am. My name is Cindy Davis. Sorry. 
Heather. I retired as an administrative supervisor of Stanton County EMS in 2016. Um, I live in the Walnut Hill area also. Um, on January the 20th, the Walnut Hill crew was pulled for no coverage. This is an ongoing thing. It's not something that is because they're running a call. Um, Century was pulled the other day with no coverage sent up. So that unit, that, that area stayed without an ambulance for over seven hours. Um, we have an elderly community up there and we have, as myself, I have heart condition. Um, if I call for a helicopter because there's no unit available, if my insurance doesn't deem that it's medically necessary, then I have to pay for that hel helicopter. It's not, my insurance won't cover it. We also have a, a person here tonight that's a, a union rep with the Scania County EMS. She was suspended for um, three days because her partner was driving too fast. Um, I think it was retaliation because she's a female and she's also a union rep. She's currently on suspension and um, something needs to be done about this. I know you had that conversation with them about keeping that ambulance up there, but it is not happening. That, I mean, that's, that's, why, that's, why you have, that's why you have town halls. I, uh, so I, I, in every bit of good faith, I thought that was handled uh, about the unit staying there. Um, and, uh, I've had some pretty candid conversations. Perhaps they need to be, perhaps they need to be more candid. Um, that's that's unacceptable, and that's not going to continue to happen. And uh, so I thought it was addressed. And as far as the personnel issue, I'm not I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I would probably wait into what's known to the personnel issues happening. But um, I would certainly hope that. In an organization with 2,000 people is not retaliating against employees for you know, things. I would certainly hope that. I, mean, I can speak for the for the board about that. I don't know, know the board as a whole. I certainly hopes you know, no one's being retaliated against for anything. I have specific other dates that I need to draft. Okay. Yeah. Please, please do. That's. I mean, the January 20th is a good start because that's very specific, obviously. And if you have other dates, we can we will we will, we will look at that. That's very disappointing. Not starting out on a very good note for this evening. Yes, ma'am. Or whoever's next. Yes, ma'am. Are they just not enough ambulances or not enough workers? I mean, why are they being pulled to Pensacola when they need it out here? I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's because of a lack of employees. I mean, based on. You know, if you look at the uh, if you look at the number of employees over the last ten years, how much the uh, how much the department has grown, it, you know, it wouldn't seem like it was a lack of number of employees. It wouldn't seem like it's a number of lack of units. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I agree. It needs to be addressed because we have nothing out in the Lincoln area. We have nothing. 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 That's what I've been told repeatedly is going on, and that's not going on there. We will, I'll, I'll address it, we'll address it. The most thing we need is an emergency center or urgency center, whatever, but we have to go all the way into Nine Mile Road, to, you know, if you're going up or whatever, something happens. Yeah, drive, that means mom, you are. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That, that ends up kind of falling into the private sector about where they're going to put urgent areas. I mean, but in just the last five years, I know there's either two or three new ones on that mile road, which I, I know is not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not Canton or Molina or Juana Hill, but it is, you know, it is closer than they were before. I mean, they're moving, they're moving that way. Uh, 
I believe that there's been some conversation with one of the three major hospitals about uh, you know about a facility in the Cantonment area, which would alleviate some of uh, which would alleviate some of the travel concerns. I mean, to take 10 minutes off, or depending on traffic, once you get into town, maybe 20 minutes off of a trip, which is a big deal when you're uh, you know when you're in an emergency situation. Since so. building all those homes out there, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I, I, I agree. And something, something will happen as a result of the meeting tonight. I'm, I'm very upset. But thank you. And I can't, I can't, I don't know if that microphone's not working or not, but I, I can't hear them very well. So. Yes. Why, why was the ambulance from Atmore, why was that stopped? We used to have great ambulance service out of Atmore, and then it was stopped. I mean, I know there was something politically involved in all of that, and just like the other night, they had to get special permission for Atmore to come across the line. Let, if you don't mind, Mr. Davis, let Eric answer that. I, I don't remember what the issue was with that more. I, I don't know if there was a, I would hope it was not a political issue, but perhaps Mr. Gilmore can shed some light. How's it going? Uh, Eric Gilmore, Public Safety Director. Uh, so we didn't have to get special permission. All we had to do was call that more and see if they had an ambulance available. We have mutual aid with those folks up there, and they sent the ambulance over as MedStar now that is taking over the ambulance service. It used to be uh, at, at our ambulance. Karen used to, uh, to own it. And this was before me, something happened with the, 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 the decline of the service, I don't know, and Steve White and that crew decided to put an ambulance up in Walnut Hill, and Mike Weaver come up and met with you folks and said that they'll have an ambulance up here, it'll be here forever, and we're going to just use Atmore as mutual aid as need be. Well, what they did is they took an ambulance from the south end and moved it north. We didn't add manpower, we didn't add staffing, it was just we robbed Peter to pay Paul to put an ambulance up there which may exacerbate the situation a little bit worse. So we've tried to keep the ambulances up there in the North End, one in Century and one in Walnut Hill. And the incident you're referring to that happened the other night, both those trucks, the Walnut Hill truck and the Century truck, one was on a uh, call on uh, Crichton Road and the other was on Cedartown Road. So both of them were on a call when we had the uh, issue on Oakshade. So they called over to Atmore to see if they had a unit available. They did, they sent it over within uh, 27, 30 minutes. They was on scene and transported to West Florida. But we do have a mutual aid with those folks. We got a mutual aid with Flomington as well. It's just if they're available to run the call as well. So it's all depending upon if they have available services. But for the specifics of why Atmore was cut out, I do not know that myself. I know for a fact, I travel to Atmore fairly regularly. Yes, sir. And if there's not no cars, sitting there at that firehouse there's no ambulance there and that's that happens pretty regular I go by there and there's no cars there so I figure it's been pulled to Pensacola I, well the date that I got that Susie came up with June, January 20th I'm gonna look into that and see what's going on with that date so because we have had conversation about that so thanks sir by the way, I just want to add that the commissioners did approve 18 additional staffing. And to the ladies' um, answer, we do need more manpower. We're working on that. So we've got a, a 18 additional nine medics, nine EMTs that we're uh, looking to hire right now uh, to add to the staffing levels. And contrary to popular belief, we do have eight trucks coming in sometime late February, March. I promise you. So those, those trucks coming in will help us out in culture. So. Thank you. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. I live in North End as well. Carol Armstrong. And I just wanted to mention that one of the problems that has happened to you is, is these freestanding um, ERs and the transports. And in the past, transport was done by St. Rosa County on um, their, their private home. And in recent times, they switched to having us do it here. 
and it's much more profitable to do that. And there has been some shortfall in the budget for um, EMS. In the past, EMS actually made money because the billing was done properly. <laughs> Yes, it was, it was done properly, and there was actually profit for the county for a long period of time. And when the, the direction changed to doing transfers because of the profitability, there was a big change because there was a shortfall in the regular billing. And if you want to find out more about what's going on, I suggest you check what's going on at the regular billing. The person that handled it when the money was coming in is not there. The person that has been was to, there to replace them was not knowledgeable in what they're doing. And so that would be an excellent place to look to see what happened to that wonderful supply of money that was coming in and paying all the bills at EMS, and it's not anymore. Thank you. I, I do remember hearing about that. I, I've never um, been fortunate enough to see, uh, to see that take place as far as running positive, uh, running positive cash flow in that, in that area, but I do, I have heard about that previously. Um, yeah, I, I know we've had multiple issues with billing um, that all can just blame on software. I don't know, but supposedly, you know, it, supposedly those, those, uh, those problems are remedied and, and we're headed for bluer skies in the department financially. And I know the board, uh, I know the board certainly hopes that's true. So thank you, Karen. Next comment or question? Yes, sir. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm Josh Edwards. I live on the north end of the county. Um, I live on Oak Shade Road, where the call was at. I uh, believe it was Wednesday night, April the 7th. It was my father that was involved. You know, we didn't know it was as serious as it was, but at the same time, I work at GP in Root, Alabama. I was at my mom and dad's house and I volunteered for the department, God bless them. Because they was there within about five minutes. I made it to my mom and dad's house and I know I sat there for 20 minutes before somebody made a decision to call that. After we was told, we're going to get life life to come up here and get him, go land in the front yard. And they said it was weather conditions. I don't know if they couldn't leave from Pensacola, I don't know if they couldn't land up there. There wasn't a cloud in the sky at my mom and dad's house. There was no fog, no nothing. I sat there, my dad laid in the floor with three broke ribs, a busted up back, and a punctured arm that we didn't know. And it's absolutely ridiculous that he had to lay there that long in the floor before anybody got there. We got to do something on this north end of the county. It's like where the redheaded stepchild would get thrown on the back burner. It's day in and day out, whether it's law enforcement, EMS, whatever it is. Everybody has had enough. We've got to do something. We've got to come together. We've got to figure this out. I get when they're out on calls in our area, just like Eric said. I understand that. But it shouldn't have took that long for somebody to make a decision after they found out why five couldn't come. For them to turn around and finally somebody decided to call that more and make that move. It's, it's, we've got to do something. Man, what if somebody's three or four year old kid had been drowned? Right. Had died right there where they was at. Or if they, like Benny back here. And he could have, could have, we could have not been sitting here with this man right here with all that. You got to do something. No, I, <clears throat> I agree. There's, uh, you know, I have an eight year old and a four year old. So yeah, the imagination of what happens. Uh, uh, one of my best friends' daughter uh, fell in the pool 20 years ago and uh, lifeline had to come and save her. She was two and a half years old and she just graduated from Ole Miss. And, uh, yeah, she wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that without, uh, without life like coming. Um, that issue is going to be addressed. And, and again, the, if, they're, if they're in call outs in the community, that's one thing. If they're not, that's, that's not going to continue to happen. And the details of why there was a delay in the decision being made about how to, uh, about how to most quickly get help to the house, um, uh, I know Eric's. Uh, making some notes or what have you about the date to try to see why why that length of time would have would have been. Uh, 
I, I can't even hypothesize what, why that would have taken 20 minutes to make a decision. It would seem like there's pretty standard operating procedures that you say, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this, you go through the, you know, A, B, C, and D, and if A, A doesn't work, B doesn't work, C doesn't work, then you go to D. That seems like a pretty, uh, seems like a pretty defined process, and, uh, but clearly there was a gap in it, and, um, you know, and I'm sorry that your, your father and your family dealt with that uh, as well. Yes, ma'am. I can answer her question as to the, how we got, you know, more money back in that time. We did not do transfers. We only did emergencies. We had tra uh, contracted our transfers out to Lifeguard, and they did them. The reason that happened is because there was way too many 911 calls and short staffed that we had to just do 911 calls and not transfers. But now they're doing transfers, and it's taking priority over the 911 calls, which it shouldn't. Okay, thank you, thank you. There's a number of things that, are, that have been brought up that we're going to have to look into. Uh, you know, how transports would take priority over 911 calls. Uh, and you know, I'm a layperson in the field, but I do think I have something in common with the board in that. That doesn't really make very much sense. But uh, so I, I, I believe you. I hope that did not be true. We're not trying to beat you up. Oh, I, it's, 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 these are they're real issues. And if it was my, you know, if it was me myself, or if it was my father, I would have the same. You know, I'd be making the same comments. I'd have the same time. I understand. Next comment or question? Yeah. Jonathan Owens, Commissioner. In May of 2023, why did you personally call or contact victims of the bank's construction crime and ask them to call your very good friend, FDLE agent Matt Infinger, for a fake investigation com uh, conversation? That's the first part of the question. Second part, could it be that you were tampering with witnesses to find out your friends, Lacoste, Lynn, or Kevin Stevens, whether or not they were being discussed by the grand jury? It was almost as if you read that, but, um, let's see, I don't remember the dates. We had some, uh, we had some victims come and speak at the board, at board meetings, and uh, a number of them were my constituents, and I feel like I have the right to speak to any constituent, uh, any constituent that comes and raises a concern about an issue. Um, don't remember the conversation related to uh, related to Matt Infinger, but I did speak to uh, I did speak to a couple of the people that spoke at the podium. It's uh, the allegations were very serious. One of them, <coughs> excuse me, one of them was a young man that uh, that went to Tate a couple years after me. That lived down the street from uh, from where I grew up and still lives down the street from where my mother lives. So uh, there were probably, I don't know, eight or nine victims uh, or people that spoke to the board as, uh, as victims or sent communication to us that I spoke to over that time. And there were very serious allegations and I think the Contractor Competency Board took those allegations very seriously. And <clears throat> whatever's happening with, uh, whatever's happening with the investigations, that doesn't have anything to do with the board. But if someone, uh, if someone has information, then I think it's very reasonable that they would speak to, uh, uh, I don't think the lights are on the timer. I think it's very reasonable that they would speak to law enforcement or people associated with law enforcement. And uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to not communicate with, with people that communicate with me that reach out to me and ask for help. A lot of times people don't understand what the Board of County Commissioners actually does and what they don't do. Um, in this case, we do have something, you know, we do oversee the contractor competency board, but we're not law enforcement and contract conference boards not law enforcement. But often the general public doesn't really differentiate between different parts of government. So they reach out and tell your story and or tell their story. And uh, as I have with many things, when people you know, when people give you the story, you try to point them in the right direction. So thank you for the question. Next question. Yes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about getting some help. Uh, I started doing this, I brought the pictures with me. Uh, the problem that I got, the water come in my back door. Well, it's not coming in the back door yet. I got a pump that helps keep it out. But I don't have a big enough a pump for a big, big rain. And there's no way I can block the water coming out of that. Kirkwood development 
and I'm sure you know where I'm, where I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And I don't know what else to do. I'm not able, physically able, to go out and ditch or, or, or trench the whole property. And if tonight, if it comes a big rain, water's gonna come into my house, into my kitchen. And I, I need some help blocking that water from coming into my house. That's the first thing. Okay. And I, I, I don't know what to do other than try to get out there and put some concrete down and, and burn it up. Well, I even tried a part of that, but it just seeks the next port. And it comes down the driveway, and comes right in, in my, on my back porch. And I don't know what else to do. Um, Mr. Bailey, I, I appreciate you having me out of the house you know, a month or so ago. Um, I know our credit enforcement has, has been out, you know, has been out a number of times to try to look and see about what a runoff. I mean, you know, what your neighbors do is not supposed to affect you negatively. And when you know, if what your neighbors are doing affects you negatively, then that's a uh, then that's a that's a problem. Um, you know, I'm not an engineer. I need somebody that you know is. is kind of trained to look at these and say that this water or this runoff is affecting, you know, is affecting Mr. Bailey's property. Um, and right. I, I know where we are physically in extension. I think they've been trying to help with, you know, he certainly had some grass that died on the front of, on the, front of the house and trying to uh, do some of the scientific or chemical stuff to just kind of check the grass. I know you, I know you said you re it last year, you know, spent money doing that, trying to check the science and, and see if, See if there's something that we can do at extension to help kind of get your you know, get your lawn back in some sorts. Uh, you know, I know it's it's not it's not lawn season right now, so maybe it's going to you know hopefully, hopefully maybe it's going to get better when when grass starts growing again. Maybe it's going to look better, but maybe there's some science stuff that can help you with. It. That's not the problem altogether. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of problems there, but uh, yeah, some of the grass that come back, but the pattern of the of the weeds indicate that you know the the problem is coming from over in that neighborhood it's coming across my yard and until i stop that i i, I dare not be sawing because it'll just do the same thing yes sir um we'll we'll keep looking we'll, we'll we'll keep looking at your house and your property and try to see what, what we can what we can do to help like i said your you know the development you know just east of you is not supposed to have a negative impact on your yard and your what happens at your house? Um, you know, so far the code officers have not seen. You know, have not seen that it's had a negative impact. Uh, I, you know, and I see the pictures, and I know Don made some some copies of them. So we'll we we'll look at them again. And, and you know, I'm I'm engaged with you, and I'm going to try to try to figure out a way to be able to help you somewhere. Well, I need some, I really need some immediate help. I, I'm not physically able anymore. I I I've had cancer. I went to the hospital, I had a cancer surgery, I had a heart attack while I was in the hospital, and then I had a pacemaker, and I just physically can't uh, do anything myself to, yes. to do it. And I, I, need some, I need some help, and I don't know of anybody, uh, and I don't have any neighbors to help me. And like I said tonight, if it rains hard, my house is going to get wet. And I, I've been working on this problem since July 12th. Okay. Well, last year. And, uh, and so let me tell you a, a little story about this. Christian wrote a little bit back. He, he was concerned enough that he came out and visited me to see about that problem. And I had a heart attack. Well, I was uh, literally, I. I had one of those anxiety moments. This one kind of commission come out there. I didn't get to show him nearly all I all I had to show him. Right, well, I, and I, I still will be there today with you know uh, unsatisfied because nobody's going to help me keep the water out of my house. I, I did some things in the house. I didn't know you had a medical uh, a medical event that followed my visit. On. So I'm sorry for that. I wrote it back. Why you was there? I thought I was going to call 911 while you were there. And I took that, I took that, not the best one feel. Right after I left? No, while you were there. You didn't tell me to call 911 when I left? Well, 
I was I was having an attack thing. Okay, well, I, could, I could not sit down and explain to you what was happening. Goodness, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you did that. I, I didn't realize that you were having any kind of that's area. Okay. Literally one handed. Yes, sir. I ran over the my other thing with a, with a saw and <laughs> I cut it off. And I, I was, I'm physically impaired right now. Well, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of freaked out. Yes. Well, I have been. I don't know if there's a lot of levity in that. It's, it's okay. I, it's, I didn't know you were having a medical emergency while I was at your house. I, that's terrible. You um, didn't? Well. I mean, I was there for 45 minutes. I had to leave. Yeah, he drove up the driveway and said he was out there. I had to invite him in. And I had been working on this thing for a long time. But I looked his his appearance. Oh, we have well, that's good. I'm glad that that voice didn't cause it. Um, Harry, I, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you some more. Try to stay engaged and see what see see what we can do to try to help. I, you know, I know one of the solutions you had mentioned was the county paying for new grass, and I don't know if that's going to happen. But we're, we'll try to figure something. No, we'll they, try to figure something out. The, the real problem is it's, it's not not your business. It's somebody told the people behind me. To tear down that one of their pools. And he tore it down before the officer got out there. That's the one that was draining the yes, pool sir. across my yard. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying to. Well, I'll, I said, I'll, I'll stay engaged with you here and try to help. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to stay engaged and try to help. Yeah, I hope you can help. I'm just here to block your water. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to happen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. If you was on a different issue that I hope what is being addressed by you and the solvent is the uh, near sources and outrageous increase in homeowner property insurance in this county, even for people that live miles from the Gulf of Mexico, uh, you know, in District 5. Yes, sir. And uh, <clears throat> increases of two, three hundred percent on personal insurance costs in the last three years have gone up almost fourfold. I'm hearing stories of some folks having to pay premiums in excess of $8,000 a year without flood insurance, the way the policies are being written. As I'm sure you're probably aware, there are many insurance companies that have decided that they're going to decline writing insurance in Northwest Florida, particularly Scandia County, in specific area codes, which is interesting to me how they can pick and choose it. We get the feeling that we're paying these folks uh, major premiums to be certain that we don't have any claims. Uh, folks that have mortgages on their properties, while not necessarily being required by law, are almost being extorted in that if they don't have a significant additional income to pay property insurance premiums, they're in danger of losing their mortgages and losing their homes, which obviously contributes to the homeless populations we have and the destruction of people's lives, particularly senior citizens who are on fixed incomes and don't have the means to meet those kinds of premium costs and therefore basically are going what's being termed bare in terms of homeowners insurance. As I understand it, approximately, or perhaps now, maybe more than 20% of the citizens of the state of Florida are going without homeowner's insurance because they just can't afford it. And there are some, a few additional companies that are beginning to write insurance, but some, I won't name mine, but some won't insure or re renew your insurance if you lapse on payment. Uh, because they're no longer writing policies in Escambia County. So it is becoming a greater and greater situation, 
particularly with respect to the number of people who are immigrating into this county and seeing our area as being a very desirable place to live and to retire to. The uh, flood of people coming into the county could very well be stemmed by this, and I've even posted some things on social, on social media to caution people who have asked about where's a good place to live in a Scandia County and caution them to please investigate the cost of your homeowner's insurance premiums before buying in this county, simply because in many cases, in some cases, I have seen where the cost of a homeowner's insurance premium exceeds the cost of the mortgage payment. That's ridiculous. It's just out and out ridiculous. And I'm asking, and I realize this is not your fault, sir, you don't, <laughs> you don't set those premiums, I understand, or nor do you regulate the industry. But with respect it's to- forum, It's a good forum for whatever, whatever ails in the place. <laughs> but I'm asking if you haven't already, that you and Ms. Salton and whatever officials of the state government, or whatever officials of the county, can exert any and all pressure on Tallahassee to fix this problem. It's just getting crazy. People are uh, are in dire straits. And uh, the problem, uh, as I see it, one of the problems that affects, particularly our elected officials, is that some of your older citizens, uh, and I'm 79, so I don't know many of those, but uh, some of them, many of myself, I'm, I'm a lifelong resident of Scandia. Those are our voters. So yeah, yeah I, I don't hang around with old folks. <laughs> but where it's possible, please follow up on that and uh, see what you can do and the county officials can do to, uh, to twist some arms, to get some information. The citizens insurance business is, is probably the worst alternative, though it's already been stated many times, it's the last alternative for people trying to get property insurance. In some cases, that's not going to work either. Uh, I was just informed either, even to renew that I have to have a four point and wind mitigation inspection of my home, which can easily cost anywhere from $150 to $300 so that you can prove to your insurance company that you don't need insurance. Uh, what, what, what is the rationale of that? Uh, I, I guess I just don't understand, but it, it is a problem. It's a growing problem for the residents of the county. It seems to be an especially growing problem for residents in District 5, and whatever you could do with that, I would appreciate it, and I think it advance for solving that problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll take credit. There's not a lot of credit. It's thrown this way, so I'll accept credit. Um, no, it, it's a real, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge problem. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't interact uh, you know, nearly as much with other, other citizens in the county as I do District 5, so I know it's a huge issue in District 5. I suspect, based on conversations that the board has had amongst ourselves, that it's a huge problem, it's a huge problem throughout the county, I, I believe. Uh, it's, I don't know what the solution is. I mean, well, the solution is that this state government is going to have to step in in some form or fashion. Um, you know, my, my mother and brother have a, have a business that you know, has been building, it's been there 45 years that uh, you know, we don't have insurance on currently for that reason as of last summer. You know, the price was, I mean, just exorbitant. And uh, uh, you know, so I never, I never heard the figure that 20% of people didn't have homeowners. It's not shocking um, because I uh, really, yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, so I did see an article pretty recently that talked about how Florida was not the paradise that it was at one time, and uh, but it really the sole reason that the article alluded to was the homeowners insurance issue, um, especially for especially for seniors, you know, especially those that are primarily living off of uh, either Social Security or some other pension type income that doesn't have uh, you know doesn't have any kind of equity uh, composed to it. It's going to have a cost of living adjustment, but the cost of living adjustments don't. I mean, they don't approach the 30 and 40 percent annual increases that we're getting in, in property insurance. I know that uh, just at our at our home, which is almost 11 miles from the water, you know, our property insurance has doubled in three years. And, I mean, 
So we live just south of Kingsville, very, very close to where you do. So it's, um, uh, the numbers are not shocking. I don't know what the solution is. I have talked to our like, to delegation about it. And uh, you know, to a person, as a human being, they understand it. And they understand the problem. I uh, have not yet heard really what a silver bullet solution is. And I really haven't heard a reasonably good solution yet. I don't, I don't know what that, I, you know. I, I know one thing that's been discussed was, you know, you have companies that are wanting to not, you know, they want to not do property insurance in Florida. But they'd like to keep their, their books of uh, auto insurance. Auto insurance is you know, still very profitable with property, you know, perhaps perhaps not as much. And uh, maybe that's some, maybe that's an angle that could be looked that you you know if you're not if you want to do auto in the state, you're going to need to do property. I, I've investigated that avenue, and there are several companies that insure auto insurance and do and have in, in fact in the past written homeowners insurance policies that will now not do so. Right, you're, you're, you're right, and that's happened. And there's been and there's been a half dozen pretty recent examples of that, but that may be one of the avenues, I just kind of mentioned, that may be one of the avenues where state government can step in and, and say as the as the overseer of the insurance industry of the state, if you don't do this, then you're not gonna be, you're not, we're not gonna permit you, we're not gonna give you a certificate to write auto if you don't write the property. Well, I'm, well, I'm understanding that this is not within your control. I'm hoping that between you and Ms. Altman, it can be within your area of influence, perhaps with the entire county commission to generate some kind of letter to the state insurance commissioner and perhaps to the governor uh, that this is a major and growing issue in an area where we're going to need additional revenues as a tax base because to pay for the normal services that the county provides uh, because it's not going to happen with this kind of thing, eat people's ex expendable income up, yes, uh, people moving into this area, probably that tide is going to be stemmed by these particular costs and those revenues for the county based on residential property taxes are not going to be forthcoming simply because people ain't got the money. So what are you going to do? Are, are we going to wind up living on the sidewalks and tents? Uh, it looks like that's probably contributing in many ways to the homeless problems that we have in the country all over. People just being forced out of their homes. So what I'm saying is that I realize this is not within your control, but perhaps this being an election year that you and the board can exert some newsworthy pressure. Okay. Yes, sir. And you know, the, the election year part of it is not necessarily a factor. We, the, the board has discussed it a, a few times. You know, we don't talk outside meetings, but when we're together, we were able to discuss a number of things. And it is something that the board has talked about at length a couple of times just in the last year. Um, it's a, it, is a, it is a huge problem. And, um, um, you know, what, you know, the, the companies, they, you know, allude to the losses, you know, in the last few years, uh, but we went from, you know, give or take 2005, you know, when we had, when we had a few storms here across the state, and it's pretty large storms. Uh, we went, you know, with very, very, very few named storms making landfall on Florida, if any, between 2005 and 2018, when Michael went to Panama City. So we, we had a long time, they should have banked a whole lot of money. And I suspect they did, and it's, but it, it's not a factor anymore, that money's gone. So it's, I guess that's not part of the equation. Well, I'm sure you folks hear a lot of complaints, but on the other hand, most of us are observing the fact that there's been a lot of storm water abatement, storm uh, uh, runoff ponds, uh, storm drains, and things in Solomon County, which is helping the problem. And in great, you know, I think that, that the county commission and the county uh, staff folks need to be congratulated, uh, and probably the state too, and the feds if they're involved in it. And all that helps. It's a big help. And I just I hate to see all that good effort go to waste yes, uh, because of insurance concerns and all that. There seems to be no appreciation of what's been being done by local county officials on the part of the insurance companies. But on part of the insurance companies, I'm sure there's no concern of us of anything we do, but uh, or anything good that we do. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the kind of words that you know, the board. I feel like as, a, as the majority of the board is certainly trying to you know, try to accomplish things for their constituents, trying to accomplish things for Sandy County. 
Uh, there have been a tremendous amount of projects that have completed, and, and you know, a number that are under construction now. Um, you know, I, uh, perhaps I'm just optimistic, but I, I believe that's what's at the heart of the majority of folks that have that have run for office and, and have served in office are trying to they're trying to do things that deliver uh, that deliver good things to their constituents, that deliver good to the citizens. Um, you know, I know that that's that's I can tell you that's one reason why. Wes is in a position, he's in as county administrator, um, you know, over a period of years when he was in public works and, and you know, kind of ran that outfit on Highway 297 at Kansas Um, You know, what built trust with the board was the ability to get things done. You know, you have a problem and uh, Wes gets on it, you, you know, you find, some, you know, you get, you get outcomes and you get solutions and he expects people to get work done. So it's very important to the board that projects get done, that, that purchasing gets projects out, that they get completed. Um, it's a it's a big deal. It would be much better if everything didn't cost 60 or 70 percent additional on what it did three or four years ago before COVID. But it does. Um, you know, all our quotes come back. You know, if the estimates were done five years ago, they're nearly twice what the estimate was. But even from three or four years ago, you know, it's 30 or 40 percent higher. Um, had some conversations with DOT. That's one reason why we're you know having some problems getting a very big project in Escambia County funded. Is the estimates are. Now it's twice what they were five or six years ago for the actual construction of a new interchange. It's just, it's, I don't know, I don't know when some of those costs come back down. Um, I know we're paying, you know, we're paying personnel, we're paying employees a, a lot more than we were, you know, five, six, seven years ago, which is, which is good. Um, but, you know, all of, all of that money is what you have to do to compete. I know that, you know, ECUA has had the same issues, kind of spent some of these meetings in the past, and, you know, it's talked about whether they're having to pay drivers, we're having to pay the same things for drivers. If you're paying drivers that, then you got to pay mechanics, you know, whatever, two, three times that. I mean, it's, it's you know, and it's all the business here, the businesses here locally. I don't know, you know, there was an impression, you know, during, as you got towards the end of COVID, that things would go back to normal. Uh, prices in restaurants, prices in grocery stores, prices at, uh, you know, at Walmart and Target, those things would come back to where they were pre-2020, and, and that hasn't happened. And, um, and now you start to feel like it might be a folly to wait on that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good evening, Stephen. Um, if you've taken a drive from Interstate 10 up through Barth on Highway 29, you have seen all the construction going on. And evidently, the, build, the builders have the money <laughs> to begin with. But my concern is road uh, and school concurrency prior to 2013. The developers had a ruling, from what I've read, that they have to uh, develop in an area where there are adequate roads and adequate schools. I, as a retired teacher at Ransom, uh, had 196 students go through my classroom every day. And that was because of the development all around Kingsfield. I'm a retired teacher, and I volunteer up at schools, and I know many of the schools are maxed out. Where are these students going to go, and where are the roads going to come from? Thank you. Um, I don't know where the kids are going to go to school. I know that there's a, uh, know there's a conversation with the school district right now about, you know, uh, parceling out a portion of that line field aid for, uh, for a K-8, you know, kindergarten through eighth grade school to go there. Um, there's, I know there's conversations about a new, a uh, new school in a you know, Quintet, you know, North Canton and Quintet area. There's some, there's some conversations going on you know, about something out there. Uh, as far as as far as the road portion, um, so the concurrency was removed out of the code when the comp plan of the code. Was the comp plan of the code? What was it? Comp plan. So the concurrency came out of the comprehensive plan when it was no longer required by the state. Um, I would say it, it is something that the board has has discussed a little bit within the last you know six eight months of last year. Um, you know whether it's whether it's economic, social, uh, financial. You know things are things are cyclical, and it may be you know maybe the time to begin having a little bit more of that conversation about some concurrency. Um, you know it's. It's something that, that does add additional, I mean, it potentially adds additional cost to development, but you know, the majority of folks, in my opinion, that are doing development here are trying to put good product on the ground and uh, they're trying to you know, 
trying to put a quality product on the ground that people want. Um, you know, when things you know when things slow down, when things are great, you know everybody's buying everything that gets built. When things slow down, you need to have uh, you need to have some more of those amenities, and you know some of those amenities that that are marketable when things slow down a little bit are sidewalks, are you know schools in close proximity, or good you know good neighborhoods, those kind of things. And, um, but Bonnie, within the last so within the last calendar year, the board has discussed maybe that maybe that conversation needs to uh, uh, you know needs to kind of be rebroached. Um, you know, just last week we started discussing some change to the land development code related to some parking some parking issues that we're having. You know, in multifamily certainly I got a very nasty email today about uh, issues on. Not nasty. No, the tone was not nasty. The content is just unfortunate, um, but it's uh, related to all the cars that are parked around University Avenue, University Parkway between Nine Mile Road and the entrance to the university because of the parking issues with the apartment complexes there. So the board began that discussion last week. I do think that we're going to end up making some changes to the way to the amount of parking spots that have to be when you do more that have to be included when you do multifamily, as well as uh, maybe some changes to some of the parking issues for new neighborhood development. Because we have, uh, you know, based on some conversations with law enforcement, we have law enforcement being deployed daily to uh, settle what are somewhat neighbor bickering disputes about you parked too close to my house or you blocked part of my driveway or you, they couldn't pick my trash up because you were parked here, which are real and they're serious when it's happening to you and your neighbor. But in the scheme of deploying law enforcement for that, that's that's not really what we. I don't think that's really what anyone in the community would like to have to deploy law enforcement for. So. Um, you know, some of those things that were done to kind of stimulate the economy some number of years ago when things were very slow after 9-10, uh, you know, maybe the pendulum has swung a little bit, you know, has swung a little bit where we need to have a different conversation. The new school that was built just recently, the brand new school that was built just recently cost the taxpayers $141 million. Who's going to pay for that? We, the taxpayers, are which I don't have a problem with because I believe in the schools. But, you know, with all these people coming in, we're going to have to eddy up for schools. We're going to have to pay for water service. We're going to have to pay for roads. And and I just think the builders need to share that amount. Yes. What schools cost $140 million? It was, uh, Pine, no, Pine, let's see. Over, uh, let's try to uh, Pleasant Grove, Grove, Pleasant Grove, Grove, Grove Elementary was just opened in August, uh -huh. and it was on one hundred forty-one point five wow. million. Yes. Uh, I, I know the area. I've not seen the school, but yes. So the same thing along questions along that line is with the construction on Nine Mile Road and zoning and planning is going to allow another seventy or ninety homes at the end of West Roberts Road. Cut through has become a big problem on West Roberts. If anybody drives down that. You, you better get your car aligned every week. And, you know, one of the things that needs to happen is the same, I'm following her, her theory is, we build it, if you build it, they'll come. And if you build it, you need to have the infrastructure to build it, whether that's the developer or whoever, whether it's fire, police, EMS, all those costs fall upon everybody. And if you don't do that now, you end up with what you got on West Roberts Road right now. It used to take 10 minutes to get, I've lived out here as long as you have. Yes. And, uh, and it used to take 10 minutes to get out of my road, now it takes 30 minutes to get out. So, West Roberts is a, I mean, is, is a real, uh, I mean, West Roberts is a concern. Um, we, uh, and I want to thank Joy Black, the county engineer, as well as, you know, as well as Wes for, you know, a couple of years ago, maybe 18 months ago or so, we, the estimates, when I took office to widen and do improvements on West Roberts, might have been, I want to say it would have been 1.2 or 1.3 million dollars. You know, in 2013 or 2014, and it's going to cost what now to do this improvements for? What's your figures? Three. What is it? Okay. Um, it's going to cost several million now. Yeah. Whether whether the number is three million or, or three and a half or in that in that ballpark. Um, so the board awarded the design. Oh, it's out for it's it's out for design right now. Okay, I'm sorry. So the contract is out for design. So the design contract will be awarded 
um, sometime in March. I guess the project, I'm sorry, the project is out for design to see who's going to do the engineering for it. Um, hopefully the board will award that pretty soon and hopefully break ground on, uh, break ground on those improvements uh, before the end of the year. I know that join us September, October, November. I mean, before the end of the year, probably, really soon. Okay. Eight, eight or ten months to break ground to begin the actual construction. It's, I know it's a real issue. It's also very narrow. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, that's posed a lot of problems is uh, heavy truck traffic using that road to get to Pine Forest Road, and uh, we have. You know, There's no enforcement on that either. So. Well, it's a, it's a it's a problem. Um, you know, we post signs, and it's you know it does. It's that's not something we can enforce. You know, we need our partners. Uh, you know, we need our partners that have law enforcement capacity to enforce the no truck, you know, no truck areas. Um, you know, I know a number of the ones that, you know, that have been pulled over over the years say that their, their local trucks are going to a construction site, but the volume of heavy truck traffic between Highway 29 and Pine Forest, even though there is construction west of Pine Forest, Stone, West Roberts, there is construction right there, but it is not, it is not the majority of the traffic that runs between Highway 29 and Pine Forest. They're just using that to get to Pine Forest Road, and it's similar to some other areas that we have in the district, and we just need to keep, we need to keep larger, you know, the truck traffic, ideally on DOT main, maintained roads, that's uh, nine mile highway 29, we need, you know, we need to keep them in those areas and not on uh, what are, you know, neighborhood side streets. Um, the, one of the things that's going to cost a lot in West Roberts as well, and uh, you know, we've lived here a long time, there's some low areas right when you get west of the railroad tracks, just turning off of Highway 29, and uh, I think a lot of that is going to take removal of a lot of bucket and mud and those kind of things. And a number of y'all, and I know I have some constituents from you know, the far north end, but you know, a number of the others of you may live closer here, um, expecting that West Roberts issues to be similar to where uh, Detroit Boulevard in between Highway 29 and Pine Forest. Um, we just have done a, completed a large project there and I don't know how many feet of muck they had to remove around where there's a bridge right before you get to Pine Forest Road, but it was very, very deep. I don't know, seven, eight feet or 10 feet or something. There was just a ton of muck, and I suspect West Rockets under the road is gonna be similar. Uh, but we are, we are working on it. It's been one of the most complained about roads that I've had over the years. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Ernie Forrester. I attended your meeting back in January down at the, uh, the okay. community. Yes, sir. And in regard to uh, stormwater, uh, when I went down there, I went thinking by mistake I had talked to my neighbor about my water problem. He was building his new house that day. And uh, this is the boat that I want to order from Grand Oaks. Yes, sir. Do you, do you remember? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I talked to him, and he said, I'll talk to my inspector. He's a good guy, and we'll see if we can get some work done. I said, okay, good. And so about two weeks later, I got this notice of the county commission meeting, and that's why I attended. I didn't know what was going on yes. until after I talked to you down there. Uh, and then I found out that uh, really, this was probably just a big coincidence that I got this and went down. Now, what I'm, what I'm wanting to find out from you is what is the way to officially put a complaint in about stormwater when a uh, subdivision like that is building up and he jacks the property up about eight inches tall and blocks the water from my property running on the hills? I mean, this has went through several inspections since May. And so I watched it until I finally called the neighbor. But I want to know, what do I have to do to make sure that I've got an official complaint so that I know I'm going to maybe see some help out of this? Okay. Um, yeah, so Dawn is in the back. She's got a black, black dress on. I think it's a back wall. Um, Ernie, if you'll, if you'll just talk to her. Code enforcement, code enforcement is going to be the arm of the county that is going to ascertain whether, well, Ideally, code enforcement is going to be the arm of the county that's going to ascertain whether your neighbors are having a, a negative impact on you. 
and once code enforcement goes out, then they can bring out, you know, they can bring out people from either engineering or an inspection to look and see about that specific issue. Um, you know, when if somebody was building a house, you know, you said they had a number of inspectors that would have been out there during that time frame, and that's true. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what they are, but they would have had a number of inspectors out there inspecting the construction. But none of those inspectors would have been evaluating. I don't. I don't believe. Nobody's evaluating that. I mean, that's not. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody's evaluating without something being said to them about, hey, look at this. Nobody's going to evaluate whether their construction is going to have a negative impact on you. Um, I, I believe what they're doing is trying to look at the the skilled trade specific parts of the construction to make sure that the plumbing's right, the electrical's right, and the foundation's right, those kind of things. So if you're having an issue with the construction just south of you, which I do understand, I do remember where you said you live and everything. If you're having an issue with that, then we'll, I'll get Don to talk to you and, and we'll get code enforcement and try to see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. And she, she said she'd have somebody call me. Okay. And sure enough, I got called. A lot of calls in the man thing that came out and talked to me. He looked at it and um, I'm still waiting to hear something. I don't know. Another thing, you know there is a problem with drainage back there. I found all that out at the meeting. There's some kind of stormwater drainage problem going on. And when that right of way was pulled out of there, I was thinking that maybe y'all was going to build a 25 foot ditch across my yard. Right. And, and now it's been vacated. Because those people that are building houses back there have been allowed to build on that right of way and now it's to a point you can't do anything. You couldn't put that ditch in there if you wanted to. I got a swimming pool backed up to, to the fence in my backyard right there in the yard where my storm water used to flow right across that lot. And now I've got a dam back there that's blocking it. And I want to know, have you got anything on the, on the plan right now to fix the storm water drainage in that subdivision right there? So. It, I'm sorry, we, there, there had never been, I mean, I've, I've been in office a number of years. I've never had a complaint about stormwater in the entire neighborhood until people got notice of that meeting, and then I heard, then I heard about it. But I've never, not one time I've received a phone call about any issues in that neighborhood. So, and the issues, and the, the people that were very vocal at the meeting live east of that area. They don't live close to you necessarily. They live east of you. Um, I think there are some ponds that are east of you on the south side of Petty, maybe. There's some ponds there that they kind of back up to in the front part. I, that, that's where those folks live that were speaking at the meeting. I've never heard that we had a drainage issue in that, in that area. And if you're having an issue with the neighborhood, then we can, you know, we, we can certainly try to see what's, yeah. try to see what's happening. The meeting, at the meeting, the people were talking down there were the ones that had the east end where that right of way was is that the, the drain right there in the corner of his back property was complaining about him covering up the drain and some things like that. Right. But anyway, this, I, won't, I won't continue that. I'd like to just find out. Make sure I have a complaint because I feel like as Cambia inspectors, somebody should be watching rainwater. You can't let people just go build something up that will dam up the water flow. And it was obvious. I got some pictures. Okay? I hadn't pulled all that out yet, right. but it's obvious where when they started throwing that field dirt off behind that, uh, the uh, and once they got the concrete poured before they started building the house, they threw the dirt out there. I've got some pictures where it just drove running down through there and cut trenches through where they were trying to fill it. Well, now they got it filled on up and sawed on top of it. So something's gonna have to be moved. It's not it's not my place to have to go in and do something to my yard. If I build mine up and make the water run in that man's yard, it's gonna tear his yard up. And so that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the proper thing. So it should have never been allowed for that house to be built up, that ground to be built up. Now now he picked his fence up higher about two and a half to three inches than the east side neighbor of this. Okay. And that made, that made about eight inches off of the ground is where the fence was that he put up that back side of the fence. 
And then he filled it in up to the fifth level, which leaves me a nice, a lot of herd down to the bottom. My water used to run across that lot to get out of my backyard. Well, now he's got it downed up to the point that just like this morning, I had me another little, little uh, pond trying to grow out there. And uh, it just, all of that that used to flow across there now can because there's a swimming pool back there and all this dirt. And now I've got a lake. So I just need to see who I've got. I've already, uh, I know that the uh, code enforcement, somebody, it was a uh, matter of fact, your secretary told me she was going to send one of, the, one of your experts out there to take care of that or to look at it. But I just, I just need to know that. Um, and the other thing I mentioned, is there a plan in place for doing anything to drain that thing? Or do I need to just continue right on now and, and go wherever I need to go to get the relief? Because I'm not going to go redo my yard. Over. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's a plan to, to do anything. I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't a problem, so there wouldn't have been a plan that I'm aware of. I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't a problem I was aware of, and so there's certainly not a plan that I'm aware of to do something. And if you're having some issues, we'll, 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 try, to, we'll try to see what we can do to, to help that. I mean, I, I, we have the same, that same problem that I would have if I firmed up my firm directing water across to my neighbor. That's the same problem that I have. Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. I understand. Yeah. All right. So my next move is I've already called on. Okay. Does that mean I have something on the record, or do I need to do something different? I mean, does it mean that if you have a problem, you have to go get an attorney to put the complaint in for you? No, I sir. don't know how I have to do this, and I need help. Yes, sir. No, sir. You don't have to get an attorney to put a complaint in. But if you allow us to kind of work through the meeting tonight and we'll be happy to chat with you some tomorrow and see what I, I, if you call and had code enforcement go out there's going to be a record of that for sure there's going to be a record of that so your 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 issue is going to be memorialized in some way um now i'm not saying a solution to the issue but your, your problem is going to be memorialized in some way and let us let us kind of work through the meeting tonight and then we'll be happy to talk with you some more tomorrow and wednesday and see what we can do Talk to, uh, talk to the guy that came out and looked at it on the 16th. Okay. So I know he got other things to do, but I guess they want to know some things to do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. So you want him to call to you or? Okay. So, someone from our office will reach out. Maybe Wednesday. Give it, let us get through tonight and, and figure out what's going on tomorrow, and, and okay. you'll hear back. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Next question, any other comments? Yeah. Steve, uh, where are we at on the light at Ashley the Nomo? Um, oh, that's news of the night. So, other than the fact we have to pay for part of it, there's going to be a uh, light at Ashley the Nomo. So, that's good. Um, we, uh, uh, did we award it to anything yet? Chris. Yeah, Chris, what did we? I know so, we talked about it last week. What's, what's going on? Yeah, the DOT has, um, they've had a pre construction meeting. All the pieces and parts have been ordered for the signal due to delays that we all have been experiencing. That's still a little ways out. Um, but we're giving a notice to proceed to an engineer to do the turn lanes on Ashland this week. Okay, so we're going to be awarding uh, uh, a contract to an engineer to do. So the county's having to pay for a new left turn lane on Ashland to accommodate DOT accepting or, or installing a red light there. So that, that's what that's what we were able to negotiate. So that's what we have to do to get the light there. We certainly need one. Um, you know, we were not. That's the closest that they're going to allow a light to Pine Forge Road on Nine Mile. Uh, so we'll we'll take what we can get, and it's a it's a good thing. What what what's that make the timeline, Chris? Sorry. Sorry. What does that make the timeline? Um, right. So again, they're they're already starting on the construction of the light. They're just waiting on all the pieces and parts to be ordered. Same thing happened out near for DOT. They, they, I don't they, know about that. 
<laughs> and so four, four or five miles, I mean, what would it uh, think, of the, think of the new signals on Nine Mile Road. You see the mass storms, but the lights aren't functioning because the guts in the box are not available yet. Uh, it's, it's a waiting game. It's a waiting game. I wish there was. So there's some raw materials that we're waiting on. But assuming they get them, I mean, sometime this calendar year, we're going to get them like that. Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, and they're not waiting on us to do the turn. Right. So, relatively soon, or in government, relatively soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully three or four months. Right. Thank you, Doug. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Jeff Carter, I uh, live at uh, 97 in Meadow Trail, so I'm in one of the new housing developments that a lot of people aren't happy with. Um, First, kudos to everybody, everybody moved here at once. I mean, yeah. at one time, so it's all right. I mean, we're not, none, of, none, of, none of us, none of us uh, may deserve to be here, so everybody moved here. Uh, kudos to Andrea Luger in your uh, engineering department, I believe. Uh, we asked for a street light, and she has been very helpful in getting us uh, started on that. Uh, yeah, I, I did that, so. Oh, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I have a question about the yeah. uh, very specific form that should be with every new sale in the Scandia County. It's called an infrastructure maintenance disclosure form. All the builders are supposed to have it when they sell a property to a new owner and it determines whether a pond and or a street is privately held or the county takes it um, obviously this was set up my understanding there was some type of a flooding event that happened several years ago and to yeah i mean ideally one of the best things the board did was require this previously the board only required a roadway disclosure that said whether the county maintained the roads in an area and then the board adopted um, after some negotiations with the Association of Realtors and some other people that didn't really like the forms, uh, the board adopted uh, this infrastructure disclosure form, which is, in my opinion, a very good thing for consumers because it does outline who is going to maintain not just the roads, but the infra who owns the stormwater, who's going to do the work on stormwater, um, you know, who, who handles everything to do with infrastructure in the neighborhood. So it's a good thing, and it's very important that it be a part of a uh, sales package. And that brings up my issue, which is, None of the houses on our street, and I know this has happened in other developments with Lennar in particular, uh, never had an exposure agreement in the, in the packet. So when you're buying the house, you don't realize that you're gonna have to pay for your streets and for your retention ponds. We happen to have one of the bigger ones around, I think. It's about two acres for 44 houses. Um, what is the enforcement mechanism for that when they don't, do what they're supposed to do because it's a county code. What what do we do to get that enforced after the fact? So I am familiar with your issue in your neighborhood. I have a, a relationship with one of your neighbors. Yes. So it's um, uh, the county. I mean, the county attorney has been you know engaged to a degree in the discussion about how to about how to try to handle this. It's uh, um, you know the most recent discussion I believe was. To interact with your title company, you know, there's a there's the a title companies don't. I literally went to. We had charity. They've never seen the form in their life. So obviously, we're not the only ones that are dealing with this. And it seems that the builders aren't following the rules that they're supposed to. The county codes. And if they're not following the county codes. That's yeah. That, that's an issue. Okay, I had not heard anything in the last few months. I didn't realize what the what the feedback from your title company had been. Um, let me see. Let me see some more. Let me. I'll, I'll talk to the county attorney and see uh, okay. if you can if you can forward some communication from your from the title company related to the issue. Uh, it's something that's important to the board. There's a reason the board passed it. We had to have multiple public meetings to pass that disclosure form. And if it's not being adhered, adhered to, I don't know. I mean, there's there's you know you would think in some number of years you would have dealt with everything. It's not something that I've had. So I, I don't know what the uh, I don't know what our recourse is or what the, I don't really know how to handle it, but let me, if that's, if you'll forward me the feedback from your title company and uh, we'll, we'll engage with the county attorney's office and see what, uh, and see what we can do to, to help. We expect, we expect the rules that we put in place to be popular. I know, they, I know they're not all the rules that some people would like them to be in place, but at least the ones we have put in place, we'd like those to be followed. Uh, but thank you, Jim. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, I got one. First of all, I'd like to thank you for getting South Highway 99 paved. 
Superman. It, it definitely needed it. Yeah. But who follows up on it after it gets paid? Because they've never put no white lines on it. And then there's places it's already crumbling on the edge. Does, does anybody go out there and look at it when they finish a the job? Yeah. Um, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I can't I figure would, out yes. we, 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 why they wouldn't put white lines on a road. Yeah, I, I don't know about the lines. I'm not. I, I'd have to go back and see. I, I don't know if lines were in that were were, were ordered. I, sometimes the lines are done. You pull together a number of roads. You know, the contractor doesn't always put the lines down in construction. Sometimes they get pulled together with other roads that have been done, and then they, you know, you award it to a. Uh, roadway striping and you know amenities company or whatever. I think roadway striping is what you would call it. Uh, a company like that that specializes in that. I know we award those pa we award those packages periodically. Um, so that may be that issue. Now the construction issues. Um, there were issues with. Uh, I believe that the contractor had to go back or Albert, a contractor had to go out and fix some issues on 99 almost a year ago. If I'm thinking back to when I had a conversation with August in dance class, that's been a while, so it seems like it was close to a year ago we had parts of the edge of the asphalt that were coming off within a couple of months of completion. So I know some of that has been addressed. If there are more broad issues related to it, then... then well, it is so much better than it was. I mean, no, no doubt of that. I just, like I say, I just... Some of the issues, I, I wonder how good of a job they actually done for it to crumble that quick? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, it, it, obviously you've been up there a while. You know, North 99, you remember that being done four or five years ago maybe? You know, we had issues pretty quickly or within months, it seems like, after the completion of that, which was a huge, or in my opinion, was a huge project to get done from 97 to the state line. Um, you know, we had asphalt sliding in some areas around Oak Grove, around the community center in Oak Grove, and some of those, some of those curves. Um, and we, you know, we had to, I don't remember if we were able to enforce a warranty or just had to pay to go around the contract to fix it, but there were some issues there. Um, I know that one of the issues with that construction is we, you know, we did not have uh, enough oversight during the construction of the North 99. I know that we paid for more oversight on the construction of the South 99 portion, which I would have thought generated a better product, uh, a better outcome. And, um, you know, hopefully some, you know, the majority of the road is standing up. Hopefully, you know, if there are some other pockets where it's not, then just please let me know and we'll, we'll address them as quickly as we can. It, uh, you know, it, it does bring up an area, I mean, you're never going to get everything done that folks, you know, would like to see. So you try to, you know, try to prioritize things by how bad they are and then how much traffic they get. You know, are they, are, you know, do they get a lot of traffic and, and really how bad they are? And, and, 99 was one of the worst roads for a long, long time. It, it, it's, it's much, it's much better, better it's no doubt. And there's a number of them up there that are. There are a number that are still problems. I mean, y'all are in the, it sounds like you're you know, often in the Walnut Hill community. You know, I have other, uh, you know, other constituents that are more along the lines of the 164, 168, 448. And those, are, those are ongoing concerns as well that we're trying to, that we're trying to address, you know, the narrow roads as well as the quality of them. So, it's, um, you know, it ends up somewhat being a little bit of a juggling match. Uh, you know, I've done these town hall meetings every few months ever since I was elected, so I don't know how many I've done, but it's a bunch. And I try to alternate. Uh, last one was in Molina, this one's here. Next one will be, you know, either Walnut Hill or Bernard Park, probably somewhere on there, because I was on East Molina the last time. I'll probably go to Bernard Park or Walnut Hill next time and try to go back and forth to, to hear different concerns and try to engage. Uh, you know, try to, if, if you go into these positions to end up with everybody being really happy, you're going to be really unhappy as a, you know, yourself. You're going to be really unhappy. Um, that's, uh, you know, again, what, what you hope is you just have folks in these positions that are trying to, you know, trying to address concerns and, and, and do what they can with the resources that they have. Um, uh, and we're going to continue to try to do that. I know, like I said, a few of those roads I mentioned are kind of, the, have popped up to be the highest priority right now. Just because of the narrowness, um, I believe it's 164 currently that's out for uh, for a couple miles of a couple miles of widening. I know that's not the full extent of it, but it's two and a half for 2.2 or 2.3 million dollars to hit. So you're just you're, you're trying to manage you know, you're trying to manage what are somewhat unlimited needs with you know, with the resources that you have in somewhat of a fair manner. 
you know, one of the things that I heard when I was elected, or when I was campaigning, especially in 12, was, you know, and that I think the young man, uh, I'll say young, he's younger than me, so that's young. So, you know, the young man mentioned, you know, not having resources in District 5, and that's another criticism that I heard, you know, during, uh, you know, well before being elected. And again, it's a big district, I've got 500 square miles, give or take, and it's not addressing everybody's needs and concerns, but you, you hopefully the majority of folks are seeing that there's a lot of money being spent. Um, again, it's not solving everything, but it didn't seem like there was money being spent for decades, and there's a lot of money being spent in the district now. It's just a matter of trying to prioritize you know, what we can do exactly what we can get done in a timely manner. So I don't want to come to meetings and just tell you, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, because, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to be here to stand for the accountability of what I say, so I don't want to tell you, yeah, we're going to fix that, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that, because in three years, I, you know, God willing, I you know, may very well be here to answer for what I say we're going to do. Um, the one thing that's not, that's not a circumstance of resources is addressing that unit standing up there, unless it's being called away for work in that area. That is not, a, that is not an issue of contracting or Inflation or something, we will that that will be addressed. Yes, there. I'm sorry. Two minutes. Oh, 99 South, really? No. Okay. So, uh, 99 South hadn't been signed off on all the way. Oh, it's been a while. It should have been. I mean, ideally, it would have been signed off on a long time ago. But apparently, there are more. It sounds like there are some more problems than I was aware of. I knew there was some last spring, but uh, I kind of thought they they knocked it out. So, thank you. Are they still some more? Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say, Mr. Marriott, uh, for people, don't believe everything you're reading on the Facebook groups. There was an allegation that, that West Marino said we only fired, we have left 40. Now they're screaming more than that, so it's so sad that they're trying to blow the issue of EMS out of portion. And, I, and I'm sorry tonight, this, this Mr. Owens, who come make this unvalid allegation against you, which I know you, you're a good man, it's not true. And uh, as we all know, he, he doesn't worry about his own problem. He's got major legal problems. But I'd say to him, pull the splinter out of your own eye before you go attacking him. Because I just want to say, I, I know you're doing a good job here, constituents. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, I appreciate that. Area. I mean, uh, you know, one, one of the reasons you don't have to write that people don't have to write down their questions or their comments or do anything else is just, you know, try to have these to give everybody an opportunity to hear their concerns and, uh, you know, whether they're, you know, specifically county issues or not, they're, they're still very valid concerns and, um, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, I, if people say what they, you know, people can say whatever they want to about, uh, about you online and, uh, you know, I don't know what was said about Wes, but, you know, I know Wes and I know Wes uh, uh, does the best job he can do every day for folks and, you know, for the board and does the best he can to deploy the board's wishes to the citizens. So I'm comfortable with that. And it's okay, people can ask whatever question. It's not, it's not, the, worst, it's not the worst town hall I've ever had, so that's, it's okay. <laughs> well, it's not over, I guess, yeah, so there's that. But, um, any other comments or questions? Well, yes, ma'am, sure. sure. I just have a quick question about uh, Nine Mile Road and whoever might be able to answer that. Um, at Pinecone, when Pinecone comes out to Nine Mile, are they doing anything about a life here? So, I think DOT has turned down the life there, and they've turned it down a couple of times, and I would not anticipate that a life there ever being approved with the proximity to the other lights on Nine Mile Road. Um, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, you never say never. I, I would have no reason to believe that DOT would approve a light in that, at that intersection with the proximity to the other lights that are on Nine Mile Road, and with the fact that Pinecone doesn't have a southern doesn't have a southern uh, continuation, it dead ends into Nine Mile, so you only have that three-way traffic at the intersection instead of the four-way traffic. Um, which you know that was for years that was one of the problems with Stefani Road is Stefani, Stefani Road had a tremendous amount of traffic, but it had no southern uh, had no southern continuation. Um, and then, like I said, then the issue ended up being that it was too close to Pine Forest Road, so nothing else. But I, I wouldn't anticipate anything changing at Pine Forest. I mean, at Pine Cone, um, the governor is moving forward, or the state of Florida, DOT, is moving forward with 
a huge project at the interchange at Highway 90 and Nine Mile Road to get on the interstate. I don't know that that's the um, I don't know that that's been the bottleneck of the problem. I, I would love it if that I would love it if that construction money would go to uh, construct the fuel interchange. But I didn't. Uh, we didn't. We didn't get any say in that. I certainly didn't get any myself. So. And just one other uh, comment. Okay. I wanted to um, back up what Bonnie was saying about the concerns for the tremendous amount of roads out here. Every time you look in the paper on NorthScandinavia.com or on, on Channel 3 News, there's more construction on North End, and there's just tons and tons of houses besides what's going to be in the sector plan. And I'm just concerned that the schools are not there. We can't even afford the schools we have and keep them staffed with teachers. Likewise, you know, EMS, fire, all the things that keep us going as a county. And I'm really concerned about the overgrowth at exponential rate that is, just seems to be endless and there's no stopping of it. And I understand we need to grow, but I think it's gotten out of hand because of the concurrency and there certainly aren't any um, builders fees built into building so that they have to have an impact fee. You know, we have to do something. If we don't get it on our end to get it right, then we need to have the builders do it. And then they say, well, then you can't afford the houses. That is not our problem. Now, our problem is having what we need as a county and getting it paid for and not by us because we're not causing it. It's the, it's the permission that's being given to keep building, building, building. Yes, ma'am. And it, it is a, and I, I certainly appreciate your comments and I did bonds as well. Um, it is a, I mean, it's something that you, you know, that you try to, you try to weigh, you know, you try to weigh and manage the pros and cons of it. You try to be reasonable about what you're, you know, about what you're looking at doing. Um, uh, you know, there's, it might seem like there is nothing but approval that's, uh, that's coming out of the county. Um, that's, you know, not been the case. There's, you know, within the last um, four, five, six months or so. Been a handful of developments that have been done or requests that have been turned down by the board um, because they just seem a little bit too, you know, a little, a, a little bit too much. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, we're trying to be reasoned. We're trying to be, you know, measured about what happens. Um, you know, growth is going to continue to happen, and uh, you know, the, the, there's a huge push, uh, you know, socially I think as well as uh, as well as out of Tallahassee and state and federal government for affordable housing. And uh, I think that might have even been a viewpoint for an article in the newspaper over the weekend written by one of our elected officials talking about you know, the, the, key to, the key to affordable housing is more houses you know, in the inventory. Um, you, know, you're, you're, you can't escape the supply and demand factor that pricing, you know, price is going to be a function of. So on some level, I mean, you, you, know, you, have, to, you have to kind of accept that that is, that is true. I mean, for houses to be more affordable, they have to be more in the inventory. Um, but you still have to have some uh, some rationale to how you're approving where they go and, the, and those kind of things. And I, I, I do understand that. I, I understand what you're saying, Carolyn. I know you know uh, everyone may not agree with the deploying of it, but I think one of the I think one of the best things that we've done in the last few years was you know approving uh, new zoning category for four acre lots that you can you know you can have four acre lots. Uh, you don't have to go. You don't have to have 20 acres to build a house on. You know even. Whether you're talking about, you know, Canton and Molino or even north of there, um, I think that's a, well, Canton didn't really have any ag money left, but Molino and, you know, Molino and north do. And I think that's a, I think that's a very good thing. Um, you know, that, that's reasonable. And to me, four acres is not a neighborhood. Um, I think it opens up, it opens up uh, where people can actually, you know, if you're requiring 20 acres to be, you know, to be bought to build a house on, some of those folks that live up there may have a better idea than I do what 20 acres is going to go for, but it's a lot, I believe. It's a lot right now. And you're not going to be able to build an affordable house if you're paying $250,000 for the lot, or 225000 for the for the lot. The, the math just doesn't work. So, you know, the four acre lots I think is a good thing, and, you know, hopefully some builders will utilize that in some of those areas. And, uh, you know, those are going to be, uh, I think, nice projects. And, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep adapting as, as, as we need to. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Commissioner, my concern is the uh, intersection of Pre-Tip Road and 95A. 
as you know, we have a, uh, quite a fleet of trucks, heavy trucks that destroy the roads people are talking about. But most of our traffic is southbound. They made a, a left turn lane there at that intersection. We would like to have some input on the design of that intersection before it gets too far down the road that changes can't be made to it. Just from a trucker standpoint. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, well, we can start, we can start with you. I know we're I know we're working on it. That intersection. That intersection moves a lot of traffic. You know, not just not, not just the contractors that you know out of the pipe plant or the concrete uh, concrete plant or the asphalt plant, but um, you know from Santa Rosa County as well. There's a lot of traffic moving between the standing and Santa Rosa County through that intersection. Um, you know, Bob, if, we'll, we'll be happy to have somebody reach out. And make sure you can. I don't know if you've seen what maybe the draft draft design is. I know that there's some right, uh, just broadly speaking, there are some uh, right away concerns in that area. Um, I don't know if y'all have seen, uh, or if Bob specifically seen, any public forum over the years related to some of the residents of Clintet as you move west of that intersection. Um, but there are, uh, there's a very high degree of unwillingness related to right away acquisition. I, I guess is the best way to put that. At a very emotional high degree of is, and it's we're it's very unlikely to <coughs> excuse me we're very unlikely to be able to acquire more right away west of 95A on Quintet. It does not seem like a good thing or a very positive uh, reception. Yes, that's easy to understand. That's why I'm concerned about that left turn there. With a I run that intersection at least three times a week, and the number of logging trucks that are going to uh, the Millwater on the south. They're stacked up, waiting for a left turn. And what else? Coming from Clinton, coming from Santa Rosa County, the reason why southbound on 95A. Turning southbound on 95A. From Santa Rosa County? From Santa Rosa okay. County. Okay. I was going to say, that, uh, I, I hope they're not coming southbound on 95A and trying to make moves because they don't need to be on 95A, but okay. yeah, I understand what you're saying. Sure. Well, I know there's a problem at Jim Allen School during uh, morning and afternoon. It's, it's much better. I had a conversation with the superintendent last week. It's much better. Uh, not, it's not perfect, but, um, you know, it's taking some time. But, you know, people have, uh, you know, they, they, they've read the signs and, and uh, you know, they've kind of steered clear of that area during a couple of pockets. And it's taking a little bit of time, but I, I think the, we're not having nearly the issues right now that we had. Um, Maybe two years ago, it's it's much much better. But we're but we still don't want. I mean, it needs to continue. We don't want a bunch of traffic in that area. Sure. Well, we set the goal our, you know, to speak our piece before yes. the slide gets okay. complete. Okay. All right. We'll be happy to happy to chat and engage with you, Bob. Any other any other questions? Hearing none. Thank y'all. Um, it's I guess hour forty minutes and, and it's. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate y'all coming, I appreciate you staying. Um, I'm happy to stay around for a few minutes. If, you, if, if what brought you down is a comment or a question that you don't want to ask in front of other people, I'm happy to stay and, and interact with you some and see if there's something I can do to help. Thank you.